the main uh, program. So. I have to step over there. I'll introduce you to the hook. Oh, God, I remember. Okay, the uh, main speaker tonight is Sheila. She's going to talk about volunteer. How to run a volunteer V and radio session. Yeah. yeah, session. So let me uh, get her mic'd up here for the PA and then uh, we'll get started. I got more things on. All right. I'll just put that in the pocket. Okay. Oops. Well, she's wired up now. She's got two transmitters on her. I think of all of those rings going through you. No, that's by the time she finishes, she'll be a puddle in the floor there. That's the next clip they pop off, so slide it in. Just stick it in your pocket. Yes, slide it in. WKY. I'm a VE volunteer examiner and I'm a, I also have an extra class license. And um, if, if you were going to go to a VE ham radio exam, either to get an upgrade or to participate, anyway, all the VEs have to wear a badge. We're given a badge and it shows our name, our call sign, and uh, the class we are. It says extra. And I'll let you zoom in here, ready? Right? So you can... That's good. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, in case do you want to zoom in here, I have a public out there. Okay. So anyway, um, it just happens that while I was being a VE, my license expired, and so if you want to um, know this, the when you renew your call sign or your license, they will send you a little sticker that also updates your badge. Therefore, you're a VE as long as your call sign or your license is valid. I happened to become a VE like a year before it expired, so it only was good for a year and then I had to get it upgraded. This is why you see that little sticker, so now it's good for 2027. Okay, I, pre I made this video and I think it's a lot of fun. I made all the graphics. And of course, parts of it are just going through the forms. And it's very important. It's, I, you probably don't realize how technical and detailed all the paperwork is, of course it's the government, um, that you know, partakes behind the scenes when you got your licenses. Or if you're gonna go get another upgrade and you're wondering like, why is it taking them so long? You'll know, there, there's a lot of fuss that goes on. I, um, have a lot of examples in this about all the different forms, how they should be filled out and completed. I don't know how well they're gonna show up on the screen, but if any of you have questions after, you can see the real jobbies right here that I had scanned to make this presentation. So it's 53 minutes, and I think it goes pretty fast. So let's just sit back, eat your food, have fun, and uh, watch it, and then afterwards, I will briefly explain how to become a VE if you're interested, and then we can have some comments and questions. Hi everybody, this is KI4WKY, or this is me, right here. And this is how to do a VE have a radio licensing exam. Basically, this is kind of how it is. It's me and all of the guys. Also, I did all the graphics. So if any of these guys or any of the guys coming up look like you, it's purely coincidental. 
Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's do a disclaimer. This is not an official format. I just think it's an efficient format. Also, I'm not associated with the FCC or the ARRL. I don't work for them or anything. I'm just a ham who's a VE with an extra class license. And I think that there needs to be something out there to help you VEs to understand what exactly goes on at a VE session. Or because most of the time it's just kind of an apprenticeship program. Or if you're taking an exam and you want to know, gee, why is it taking so long to get my results or something, you'll kind of get the gist of what goes on behind the scenes. Also, if you want to be a VE, this will give you an idea of what it's like and maybe an area of what you want to do, like just be a tester or just do a, a grading or something. Anyway, this is based all on an ideal situation, and I realize you're not always going to get an ideal situation. I haven't always got an ideal situation either. All names and call signs have been made up by me also, so any similarity there is purely coincidental. What is a VE session? Well, I call it a ballet of forms and signatures between registration, testing, and grading. The first thing you do when you want to set up a VE session is get your date, then get your venue, and I'm going to go more into the venue in a second here. You get your time, you choose the type of VE session you want. Have you had a class to test new hands? I mean, a, to, you know, to teach new hands, and now you're testing it. Or are you allowing walk-ins? Walk-ins means the public. Also, you must use all valid ARRL forms, and you must register your exam on the ARRL website. This is mandatory, even if it's a closed exam for students only, and not the public. The URL to do that is right here in the lower right-hand corner. I don't expect you to memorize it. You can freeze the frame and, and uh, write it down later. The venue, okay. The ideal venue is three or four rooms. You don't always get that, but this is the best, and lots of tables and chairs. Allow yourself about two and a half hours minimum. It's better to get done sooner than to be in a rush or even literally have a lights turned out on you, which I have had done. Make sure you have good parking for everybody, both the VEs and those coming to test. And if you're doing this in a, a building that's a little confusing where you don't just walk into the door and there's your VE session, then make sure you've got signs directing the public or people to the test area that you're using. Okay, first of all, order your forms two weeks before your test is scheduled. This isn't my idea, it's recommended by the ARRL themselves. Order forms can be ordered at this URL right here, and um, once again, you can freeze the frame and write it down. And decide how many that you think will come once you know the style of your uh, VE session. So you'll know how many forms to order, not just exams, but everything. This is the order form to order the forms. It's two pages. This is what you'll download and print out. I'm not going to go through this form because it's all very uh, specific to what your situation is, and so it's pretty easy to go through anyway. Let's get an idea, though, of what you should order. If you have a class of 20 people, and so you think you're testing all 20 people, plus you're allowing the public to walk in, I suggest maybe 30 technician exams plus two versions, five general exams plus two versions, five extra exams plus two versions, and don't forget to get those grading templates and the grading keys. These are very, 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 very important. I can't emphasize that enough, and I'll explain why coming up. Now, this class was not a newbie beginner class for hands, but an upgrade class. Say they were already technicians and were going for their generals. Then kind of invert this 
suggestion here and order, say, 10 technicians, 30 general, and maybe 10 extras, plus the versions. Other forms to get. You'll make three candidate roster sheets, 30 CSCEs, the Certificate of Successful Completion of Exam, 30605, which is basically the application form, 40 test answer sheets. I say this because a lot of candidates do more than one test. They either flunk them out, they want to take it again, or they pass and they want to take the next grade up. So you can't do just one answer sheet for candidate, you need more than that. Also get two test session reports. If you feel you'll make errors or your VE team will make some errors, if they're kind of rookies at this, feel free to order extra forms. This is what the candidate roster sheet looks like. And I'll go through on how to fill that out as we go along. This is the CSCE. Once again, I'll show you how that's filled out. The answer sheet. I'll show you how this is filled out by the candidate and by the graders. The 605, which is the application form. Normally, it's a golden color. Um, here, it scans kind of black and white. And this is always filled out with pen. And the applicant fills it out from here to here, the signature right there. This area here, then, is filled out by the VE team after the candidate is totally done with doing all their tests. This is the test session report. It's green. This also was filled out by the uh, VE liaison probably at home when the whole session is over with. Except for right here, this has to be brought to the VE session because the, your VEs need to sign in down below here. Okay. Huh. Is that it? All the forms are? Yes, there are. It's overwhelming, isn't it? But I'll help you through this. This is why I think this presentation is so important. What else to have at your session? Well, you should have a money box or a container that's secure and change. The fee is $15, and mostly people are going to hand you a 20, and so you're going to need to give them a five. So have a lot of fives on hand. If they have checks, they want to make out a check, make it out to the ARRL. Unless your club is going to write one big massive check to the ARRL, then I guess they can make the check out to your club, and then the club will do one big check. Get 30, at least 30 Manila file folders if you expect a big group. A black Sharpie pen, number two pencils, about 30 of them, and a sharpener. You have about 20 ballpoint pens. Now, I know that candidates are often told, please come with pencils and pen, but they always don't do that. So you better have some. Therefore, I recommend you have pencils on hand and a sharpener in case they break the point and some ballpoint pens. Now, I say free because I like to save up those freebies that I get in the mail from my charities and promotional people and stuff and use that at VE session, so if somebody walks away with them, it's no big deal. <coughs> or if you're not a VE and you get these free pens, feel free to save them and give them to your a VE that you know in the club to use at their VE sessions. Or you can just get some cheap ones at an office supply store. And some plain scratch paper, one pad of post-it notes, <coughs> a highlighter, some colored pens with the graders, and a plain white envelope with two sheets of notebook paper inside. All this seems a little confusing, and why, and I'll explain how it's all needed as we go along here. Okay, let's start our session. First, do you have your badge on? All VEs have to show their badge, wear their badge, and prove they are qualified to put on a ham radio exam. Have all VEs signed in on the bottom of that test session sheet. Remember that green one? Now, number your file folders with that black mark Black Sharpie pen, 1 through 30. Here is the VE roster, right down here. You can see I signed in, any print, your name, your call sign, and your class. 
the rest of the fund can be filled out later at home because it just asked how many passed and about the money and everything else. And you won't even know the answers until it's over with anyway. These are your vanilla file folders. You know that everyone to 30 with that black magic marker. Make them think, bold, and clear. I have had file folders just written with a black white pen. They're so hard to read. They're so light, skinny. When you're busy, you need to see these numbers. And so I, I know I did that. This, this is a graphic here, and I did it with a, a graphic font, but really it should be a black marking pen here. The file folders match the number on the candidate roster sheet as you sign people in. So whatever number somebody is signed in at, that also matches the file folder. Now get your team in position in that wonderful, perfect vendor room. Here we have a big, long registration table. I have two VEs that will be signing people in and a money person. This is ideal, but you don't always have that. 10 to 12 VEs is ideal. But, like I said, you don't always have that. Sometimes you won't have a money person, so these two VEs also have to do the money. Sometimes you might just have one VE do the money and one VE do all the sign-in. Or you might have one VE do all the people from the class and the other VE take all the upgrades. Or one VE do all the technicians and another one do all the upgrades. It's up to you. Or the VI, they have VE liaison. This is the waiting results area, and this is the exam room, and the requirements are that two VEs be present in this room at all times so there's no cheating. Now the VEs in there can also be passing out the exams, but you have to have at least two, if not more. And the grading room. The grading room has to have at least three VEs in it because the rules are three VEs grade a test. So no one person is, you know, says that somebody passed or not. Three VEs have to all agree on it. Who are these people, you ask? Hmm, what do they look like? Don't know? Well, these are the best hands ever. Those are your minions or your backup dancers in the ballet. These people are the ones that bring files back and forth between registration, testing, and grading. Oh, I want to mention this too, to go back here. Um, in this area here, if you, if you have, whoops, if you have, um, come on, okay, if you have um, your VEs here, if you have VEs that aren't all extras and some are generals, I suggest that you make your VEs that are generals, general class only, maybe the registration or the money, uh, or even the, the, the menu guys, because you're going to need your extras to handle the exams and grading to make sure that they're qualified for all the levels. But like I said, if you don't have a lot of VEs, and I've worked where there's only five of us, um, you have to walk around and do everything. Just make sure you've got a VE qualified to sign off on some of these things if they're a general class. There's those best hands ever. Okay, and this is what a perfect VE exam looks like. It's like saying a drone is looking down upon you. You've got those little minions running around, delivering files and forms over from registration over to exam, getting people to go to exams, so bringing over to back to registration, and blah, blah, blah. Looks confusing? That's looking good. So let's begin with the registration people. If you're a VE at the registration desk, what you will do is you'll write the candidate's name on the roster sheet after they pay. Write their roster number on the top of the 605, which is the application form, and then give them the 605 to fill out and come back when it's filled out to be authorized. What's to be authorized? Basically, you check their ID with a driver's license or a passport or a birth certificate 
to make sure they are who they are, they live where they live. You can also use a library card, utility bill, or a bank statement. Once authorized, you put the 605 in the file that has the same number on the roster and at the top of it, and give it to one of the little minions and send it to those who are testing. So testing now will have a pile of potential candidates to be tested. Then you tell the candidate to go have a seat in the waiting room or wherever they're supposed to until a VE calls their name to an escort it and skirts them to be tested. Those can be also one of the little minion guys. Here's a tip though. If you had a class, you can, before everybody goes to the VE session, you can have them fill out their 605 in advance so they can just come pay and get registered and then go get tested. They don't have to fill it out there and waste time. Now, when you're looking at those 605s, really, really check these forms. There's a lot to look for, and registration is counted on to get it right. We are the door to this hobby, and we have to make sure that um, people are who they say they are, and everything is, is okay. Don't be in a rush. Don't let a long line stretch you out, and don't let impatient candidates stretch you out. You know, going <laughs> Most of the time, they're not impatient. They're just nervous. I'm sure you were nervous when you at least took your first exam. Okay, make sure the 605 is correct and filled out correctly. Here we have number one written on the top of it. These are areas that are very important. It's social security number or the FRN and a phone number in case you need to get a hold of them. Now, if they're going for the first time for a license, you have them check the X right here. It says new license. Okay? And then they sign and date it. They uh, signed all this right here. Okay? This card here is later filled out by the VE team as the total results of what this person did. You, you check you know, what level they passed and signed off by the liaison and signed off by the VE uh, people. This is the 605 for a general or an extra for the upgrade. They did not check this box here. They checked the second one down that says examination for upgrade. And because they should have a call sign in here already, you should also have a copy of the current license to go with it. Now we also have something new that started last August. And people are now being asked if they have been convicted of a felony or not on these applications. There it is right there, a question. Yes or no. If they hit yes, what do you do? Well, the instructions are on the back of this form, but basically here's what you do. This is where that envelope and notebook paper come in. You hand them the envelope with the notebook paper, and on that paper they are to write um, what the crime and what they did and the date of conviction, if they were guilty or innocent, the punishment they got, did they do anything to right their wrong, and they sign the date and they put it in the envelope and they seal the envelope. You don't see it. No VE see this. This is between the FCC and him. And then you tell him that licensing could be delayed by two weeks or more. It all depends upon you know what the FCC wants to check up on. This envelope then goes in your file, and you'll send it in with your 605. And then he gets tested like everybody else. Here we go, signing people in. This is page one of our candidate roster sheet. I wrote any town USA here, and the date. And as you see, there's one through ten on here. And this is a carbon copy. We have John Smith. He paid, and he's brand new, so he has no current call sign or no current um, class level. Okay. This is page two. As I said, there's only one through ten on these forms, and if you're going to have 25, 30 people at your exam, 
you're going to need to do more numbers. So then on page 2, I need 1 and 11, 12, 13, 14, like that, okay? If you're having two VEs register people, do not give them both registration candidate rosters that have 1 through 10. Otherwise, you're going to have two people with number 1, two people with number 2, and it's going to be a mess. Remember John Smith was number one? Well, you can't have John Smith and Sue Baker both number one. So give one registration VE a sheet number one through ten, and give the other registration VE have him number 11 through 20. And then he'll have the 11 through 20 files, and the first one will have the one, one through ten file folders. Okay? Here we signed everybody in. So here's who we have in our pretend session today. We have John Smith, who paid, who's brand new, so he has no call sign and no class right now. Jerry Jones, he's already a general, and his call sign is FA4KKE. Get that? Fake. Okay, are we laughing? Okay. He's a general, and we'll assume he's going to go for his extra. Bill Doe, he paid, and he's brand new too, just like John Smith, so he has done nothing. And Brad Bill, who's Doe Bill's brother, he currently has a tech license, so he's FB4 KKE, and he'll probably be going for his general. And then James Smith here, he's brand new too. Okay, John John. Larry Smith, he's a general right now, and he's FC4 KKE, and he'll be going for his extra. And I also want to mention Smith and Smith. Pay attention to spelling. And also, this is why numbers are important, because you can't just say, um, Mr. Smith, and they'll look at you and say, which one? So you can say, Mr. Smith, number five, or Mr. Smith, number six. And especially with foreign names, be very, very careful on the spelling of these things, especially if you're putting on CSCE, okay? And we have Joe Jones, who's FD4 KKE, and he's a tech. He'll probably be going for his general. And we have a girl. Amanda Jones, and she's brand new to this too. Now, they're all going to go to be tested once we've registered them. Testing area is the quiet area. Shh. Talk quietly and only when necessary. VEs should not be chatty. I remember this when I first took my technician class, and the VEs were in the room and laughing and talking and having a ball. And I was I just wanted to say, oh you will you guys just shut up? I can't think. So please make sure that a testing area stays quiet. The testing area be easy. Here's what you do, okay? First of all, no cell phones are to be on. Actually no cell phones are supposed to be on during this whole session, but especially in the testing area. Make sure the calculators they bring are clear for memory. They cannot use a calculator that's on the phone, a smartphone or anything. You've got to have a calculator separately. Two VEs must be watching at all times for no cheating, no quick notes, nothing up the arm, nothing up the sleeve, you get my drift. Also, now when somebody comes in, those file folders should already be there that were sent over by those little minions from registration, remember? So you take a file folder of a candidate and you give the file folder to one of the little minions who will then go and get him in the waiting room in the lobby and escort him to the testing room. Now, he'll say, Mr. Smith, number five, or John Smith, or John Jones, or whatever, number one, and follow me. When he arrives at the testing area, his file folder will then be given to a testing VE, who will open it up and look at the 605 to make sure he is given the right test he wants. And he'll ask the candidate too, are you going for a tech or a general or extra or whatever. Then you grab an answer sheet. On top of that answer sheet, you must also write the candidate's roster number and file number, which is all the same thing. 
You show the candidate how to fill out the answer sheet before he is seated and begins. Here is an example of a technician exam. This is the front of a real technician exam. It's yellow. And there is a test session number. Here is the answer sheet for John Smith, who was on the roster as number one. He's going for his technician. Remember, he, had, he was new to this, so he circled two. If he doesn't circle it, you circle it. This number here is the same as the number on the booklet. They must be on there. You want to take your yellow highlighter and mark this on the answer sheets to make sure people do this. Fine. This is real important to the graders, and I'll explain why soon. And then in ink, he fills out the rest of this and signs it. These are the answer sheets for general and extra. And I did this font in green and this one in blue, or green and blue here, because the general is a green color and the extra exam is a blue color. So here we have Brad Doe, he was number four. And Brad Doe was a technician and he's going for his general. So here, number three is circle, and the test booklet is written right here. Here is Jerry Jones, who was a general, and he's going for his extra, so you circle four, element four, because he filled that out here, and of course you've got number two on top of there. Now, all the forms are basically filled out with a pen, except for this answer sheet, which is half pen, half pencil. The reason is because you want to be able to erase in case you want to change your answers over here. So the pencil is on this side, and also there's 50 questions on this answer sheet, but if you're doing a tech or a general, there's only 35 questions on the test. So they will only be filling up to here. If they're going for an extra, they will be filling up the whole thing. As I said, you can give them a white scratch paper or you can have them use the back of the sheet also. But when you're done, you collect both the scratch paper and the answer sheet to go in the file. And you can send the candidate back to the waiting room to wait for his results. In the meantime, you give the file to one of the little minions again, and you have that sent over to the graders. Make sure that the exam and the file number and the 605 are all the same number and in that file before you send it to the graders. The graders are to grade as soon as possible. You do not wait for everybody to be tested, and then you grade everybody at once. You just take one person at a time and keep the flow going. Test, grade, you know, so on and so on. Okay, now we're gonna get into the sensitive part about how to actually grade the exam, which is very important because this determines their fate. <laughs> okay, the graders, look at the exam number on the answer sheet. That's that test booklet number that, I, that was so important. Go to your template key and find that temp, the exam number to find the correct template number that matches it. This is why it's so important to have that test number on there. The graders need to know which test they took. Then you line up the template with the four dots. And any wrong answers, you circle inside the template area. Here is the answer sheet with the template over it. This is fake, by the way, so it's a fake extra. And if you think that these are the right answers to the extra exam, then you're going to flunk. Because I took my art program and I made these A-A-A-A-B-B-B-B-B-C-C-C-C-B-B-B-B-A-A-A. So uh, this is not right. These are not the right answers. Anyway, here are the four corners that you line up the dots. This template is 2-3 here. Then it's a 4-7 upside down. This is why the test booklet is so very important. Because on the template chart, it tells you which template number answers has, is the right answer sheet for that booklet. 
these templates are good for four exams. They go this way, and you turn them around, and if it's 4.7, the holes line up for another exam. If you turn them over, there's numbers on the other side, and they will do another exam this way, and another exam turned around this way. If, so you don't want the graders using the wrong template side for the test you took. This is why it's very important to put that on there. Here's an up close look at what to do when you grade. Example number 10. They answered A, the answer was D, you circle it in red. 38, it's A, it is D, you circle it. Thank you, 41 here. Do not, this is my own tip here, there's not a rule, so do what your VE head tells you to do on grading, but I suggest you do not put a check, a dash, or an X near a wrong number, but you do this circle thing inside, okay? And the reason is, is because the candidates themselves can put little markings there if they want to go back and, you know, rethink a question or something. Or you might get the little marking off. And these, these lines are so sensitive. If you kind of get it off, the next VE who comes along will think, gee, is she saying 38 is wrong or 39 is wrong? And that causes confusion and you've got to discuss this and it takes up more time and whatever. Also, if you're the first VE grading, you do these. You do the circles. If you're the second VE grading and the third VE grading, you just kind of go, yes, 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 I get that too, yes, yes. You don't have to circle your color in there as well. Unless you have a discrepancy, then you might want to um, put a little mark with a question mark or something so you go back and ask and check things out. Here is the finished answer sheet, all graded and completed for the fake extra test. You can see that Jerry Jones is going for his extra, circle four. He got five wrong according to the grader. The first grader signed off and said, there's 45 correct here. The second grader looked and said, I agree, signed it. The third grader checked it over, said, I agree. There were no questions about it and signed off. And so they all agree he passed with 45. And that's done. And down here below is the chart that tells you how many are right, how many are wrong to pass. If the graders get confused, especially if they're doing the, uh, you know, one tech one time and an extra another time and a general another time. So this helps to keep you clear on, on what's going on. And uh, also, if the candidate has any questions, you can say, well, there's, there's it right, right there. So once it's graded and tested and signed, you put the answer sheet back into the folder, and the graders then give it to either the notification VE, if you have one, or it's sent back to registration, who will call the people up and inform them of their results. If you have a notification VE, Okay, they inform the candidate if he passed or failed. If the candidate asks, well, how many did I get wrong? Which one did I get wrong? Which question was wrong or whatever? You can tell him how many he got wrong, but you can't be specific on which question because if you tell him, well, you got number 15 wrong, uh, he can say, oh, darn, I got number 15 wrong. I, you know, that propagation one, I, I didn't know if it was B or C, and I chose B, I should have went with C. Never should I second guess myself. Well, somebody can hear that, um, or you can mention it back in the waiting room was waiting um, to get called for his CSCE. And someone who hasn't tested yet can hear that, and if they get the same question, they'll kind of have a hint on not to put down me. Anyway, the notification VE, once he notifies the person, will then put all the papers back inside the file and they'll give it to a little yellow minion and bring it back to registration. 
Runs registration against the file folder with the test results. They record it on the roster after the candidate's name with a P or an M for failing. You do this unless he's not done. Um, if he fails and wants to try again, then wait. Do not put the mark there. If someone fails, don't announce it. Quietly call them slide and let them know. If they miss by one, give them the opportunity to try again. If they miss by several, suggest that they study some more and take the exam later on. Also, I'd like to say that this is up to you and your club and your VE team on um, what the cutoff limit is. If they miss by two, you might want to give them an opportunity. This is all up to you and also how many they got wrong, um, if you want to suggest they study more or not. Also, if you know that there's an exam coming up at another club, in a month or so, you might suggest study more, and you can take it again in blah blah uh, with the XY club. Hearing the bad news, people don't always take it well. Some do, some don't. Some think bummer. I kind of sensed it. I knew they know how much they study, or you know their strengths and weaknesses. Others are really angry and they storm out, and I've had this happen. But the kids who fail, it's really really hard. And it, it's, it is that. And sometimes the parents are also upset. In fact, sometimes they're more upset than the adult because especially if dad is a ham and his son didn't pass, he is more upset at the son, which then upsets the son more, if you get what I'm saying here. Just handle this best you can for the situation and assure the child that it's OK, even adults fail. And just study a little bit more, and you can come try again. OK, let's see how everybody did. We're all curious, right? This is how you mark or complete the candidate roster once you know the results of everybody's testing. For example, now John Smith, he passed his element, didn't want to take any more put a line to it, so his highest achieved at that um, at the exam session today is a 10. Remember, if they do not take an element, you put a line to it, okay? If they fail, you put an F there. You don't put a line to it. You, put, you, you, you record what is done at every test that is taken. For example, now Jerry Jones is a general. He didn't take the technician and he didn't take the general there because he already has it. So he passed his extra and now he's an extra. Bill failed. The technician got bumped out. Didn't want to take any more. So he's a nun. His brother Brad, who is a technician, failed the general. So now he's a nun. James Smith, <coughs> who's nun, he passed his technician, and he passed the general. So I pooped out from all that, didn't want to take the extra, so he earned the general today. Larry Smith, he was a general, and he tried for the extra. He didn't pass, so he gets an F, and he gets none. Joe Jones, he was a tech. He went for general, and he passed it. He went really good. He tried for the extra, and he passed it. So now he's extra for the day. And Amanda, she's just a brilliant little woman. She passed, passed, passed. She passed all three, so now she's an extra. <laughs> so here we go on the back side here with a pass and a fail. Now, Sue, once again, failed, and she didn't take any more, and she left. But Don Baker, he passed his technician. So he wanted to try for the general, but he failed, and then he didn't want to take the extra. So his highest grade earned at this exam session is tech. And Tim Thomas, he passed the technician, he passed the general, but he failed when he tried to get the extra. So his highest earned is the general. Okay? So Please wait to fill out that roster if the candidate wants to retake an exam they failed. 
they could pass. So what do you do? You send their file back to testing with a note if they want to retry again, but to give them a second version. This is where the post-it notes come in. Okay. And if a candidate passes the test on the first exam and wants to take the next one higher, then you can mark their roster with pass for that test, but do not fill out the next line yet or the completion yet if you don't know the results of what's going to happen. Send their file back to testing with the note saying wants to now take the general or the extra um, so that people know in the testing room what booklet to give them. With each test taken by a person, a new answer sheet must be filled out. When the candidate is done, there's one last form. Yes, there's still that one last form. Remember the CSCE. And it, yes, it has more signatures. And eventually, yes, this paperwork will end. The CSCE is important. Do it right. The certificate of successful completion of exam is the important document for the candidate. Fill it out carefully and correctly in a ballpoint pen. You know, it's a multiple carbon form also. And get all signatures. Never fill out a CSCE until the candidate has finished taking all tests he wants to take for the day. If you make a mistake on a CSCE, rip it up. Put it in the file and fill out a new form. Never give out a CSCE to a candidate until three VEs have signed it. You might want to order extra CSCEs. Registration and the CSCEs. Once notified of the candidate's results, the CSCE is usually filled out by a VE in registration. So registration not only registers the people on the candidate roster and records the results of everything they've done, they now fill out the CSCE for them. It's put into the file folder and sent back with those little minions to the graders to sign and verify the level of passing, that the level of passing has been marked correctly by the registration people, you know, the circles and stuff. Once three VEs, the graders probably sign it, it's returned to the registration desk for the candidate to sign and receive his copy. Now, this is also important because if the registration desk has general class VEs there and some of these are for extras or something, you're going to have to make sure that the right VEs qualified are filling out these CSEs. If you don't have a lot of VEs, then the registration desk can fill them out. But, as I said, make sure it's the right grade level. And as I mentioned in the beginning, you can bop around and once you're done collecting money or signing people in, until you're waiting for test results, you can also go help grade and stuff. So some of those VEs might have been graders and also qualify. The CSCE is the official proof that a person is qualified to be a ham at the level he passed out until the FCC puts you in their uh, register and gives you a call sign and you show up. Here are some examples of the CSCE for various situations. Okay, we have John Smith. First of all, you put the location of the test site up here and the date. This is done on all of them. And you write in the person's registration has done this. You write in the person's name, address, right down here. You get this from the 605. Okay, you circle every test they have passed, right here. Therefore, John Smith passed his technician. He didn't take the general, he didn't take the extra, he put a line through it. So his highest class earned. What this C CSCE represents is a qualified technician license. Okay. It doesn't represent the license. It represents that he passed the technician test until the call sign and license comes in. We cross out the general and the extra and the none. This is none right here. 
and you send it off and the signature right here. <laughs> this is James Smith, who passed the technician, circle it. He passed the general, circle it. Didn't do the extra. His highest level earned is general. You circle it. Even though you passed the extra, you don't circle it here. You cross it off because his highest is general. Okay. Jerry Jones. He passed his extra, and he was um, he was a general, and so he didn't take the tech, and he didn't take the general, just put a line through, and he passed the extra, so you circle it, and cross off, you put a line through the tech and the general there, and he's an extra, cross off now. Here's Amanda, our brilliant, brilliant woman. She passed everything. So you circle everything. Every test she took, you circle that she passed it. But you circle her highest level of passing, which is the four. So you circle extra here and put a line through the rest. And then we have Brad Joe who failed. He didn't pass anything, so nothing is circled. Everything has a line through it, and you circle none. This is a sensitive thing because. You can send this back for signatures, but sometimes they don't even want this. They don't sign it. They walk out. They don't even want a CSCE that says they failed. So after those CSEs come back for the signature in their file folders, they're given back to registration, who then calls the candidate to come up and sign the CSCE. You congratulate him on passing. And you give him the top copy, which is the white copy, and you put the rest of the form in his file folder. Then you will give him some information on looking up his call sign and printing out his certificate. But first, here is a completed, totally signed by everyone CSCE for James Smith. Remember James? Uh, passed his technician, he passed the extra, I mean, excuse me, he passed the technician, he passed the general, didn't want to take the extra, and his highest is the general. So therefore, the VEs here, probably the testing, the, the graders, all agree with this, they all signed off with their call sign right here. Then he was given back to registration, called Jim Smith up to please sign this. He did, ripped off this white copy, and the rest here, the yellow and the pink, will go back in his file for uh, sending it to uh, uh, the ARL. OK, this is the form that I created. It's not an official ARRL form. It's called Congratulations, You Pass, Now What? This is because. You're talking and talking and talking and explaining things on how to fill out forms and do this and do that. And you're just kind of all talked out. And I know I am, and right now my throat's been dry for a lot of this. And so I created this form where on, it's a two sided form. And on this side, it tells you where to go to look up your call sign before it comes in the mail. Because I know most people are very anxious for it. It tells you the URLs. And then also, once you get your call sign, it also tells you where to go to print out your certificate. The ARRL, no longer, uh, the FCC no longer mails you your certificate. You have to print it out online. And so rather than say this over and over and over again or write this stuff down over and over and over again, I found it much easier to have a form that's already states it all nice and clear and to give to the people, especially if they're newbies. Um, along with the CSCE. If you, this is what's on that. Um, congratulations, you passed now. But basically, these are the URLs where you can go look up your call sign. And this is the URL where you go to print out your certificate. And I don't expect you to memorize this. You can freeze this frame and copy it down if you want to create your own form. Now, the last thing is that's 605 again. 
Remember I said that the bottom here has to be completed also inside. So once you know the final results of what somebody did, the, the um, head liaison will fill it out as in no new license, you got the technician or the general or the extra and sign here. And then you have three other VEs um, sign and date the bottom here to verify this is what you accomplished today. I almost done. Everybody's been taken care of, right? Make sure no candidate is left untested or or um, not taken care of. Uh, it doesn't know the results or the grading isn't done yet on them or, or something. Make sure your roster sheet is all filled out with everybody's results. Make sure your money's been checked. All VEs have signed that session report, the green form. There is no form left behind, incomplete or unsigned, by either the candidate or the VEs. This is rather important right there. You don't want to have to use the phone and call them up and say, oh, you forgot to sign your 605, we need to mail it back to you, and then mail it back in. And that kind of delays everybody else, too. Um, make sure all files on everybody is complete. Save for number four here, who was uh, Brad Doe. He, his 605 is in here. It's completed, and it's got signatures at the bottom, like I just said. A copy of his current license is in there, if it's available. And all the answer sheets are in there that have been graded and signed. And the pink and the yellow copy of the CSCE are in there because he got the white one, remember? The VE in charge of the liaison gathers all the forms and files. He fills out the session report at home because now he'll know how many got tested and how many passed and failed and what they accomplished and the money result and everything. And he mails in all this paperwork within 10 days. But try to do it as soon as possible. The requirement is 10 days, but I would really recommend within three business days because new towns especially are anxious to get the call signs and get on the air. That's it. You're done. Yay! Um, I know this was done for me, so you out there watching cannot um, do any really comments to me or ask me any questions. But if you do have any questions, this phone number here is the ARRLVE phone number um, at their headquarters. If, you, um, if there's anything here that I need to cover or you have any questions about. So thank you for listening. I hope you weren't too bored and it was very informative and fun. I tried to make it fun and I wish you a wonderful and happy VE testing session with everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, is there any questions? I think that's it for the same thing. Oh, okay. I only need to do it because I want to take you for a moment, please. Stay a little bit to the left. Oh, it's white. No, 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 out of the light. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Go ahead. Oh, can I talk? Is this on? Uh, that is on for here. I don't know about you guys. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Um, I take it? Okay. Um, Mike wanted me to mention how to become a VE. I'm I'm not gonna take up Oh, um, Mike Amoni, Amoni uh, wanted me to mention how to become a VE for those of you who are now interested in doing all this paperwork. Anyway, it's very easy. First of all, you have to be a general or an extra, probably an extra because then you're not limited. You can do everything. But here is the URL um, at the ARRL where it says how to become a VE right here if you want to zoom in on that. Okay. I didn't I, okay, okay. I didn't really um, add it to the program, but it's it's there for you. Basically what you do is you download the manual. Yes, there's a little manual, but it's not very big, it's only like you know this long. And at the end of it there's like 40 questions to answer. And you can look in the book to answer them. And then you mail it in, and then a few weeks later you get your badge and you get your certificate, and then you can go um, help at a VE session. That's it, that's real easy. And I noticed that um, this is one reason why I did this video, is because usually when you go to these VE sessions and you're brand new and you don't know anything what's going on, people are so busy, they really don't t take time to show you or explain things or help you. You just kind of wing it and uh, going by trial and error. And really, I don't think that's good. I, it's to the detriment of those who want to become hands if the VEs aren't sharp. Uh, really, you know, so that's why I did it. Anyway, that's it, and so if there's any comments by the VEs here that um, is something I missed, or if you want to add, feel free to... Who's a VE? Yeah, who's a VE here? See that we walk among you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like ordinary mortals? Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might point out that ARRL is only one of the sanctioned organizations that can run voluntary examinations for the FCC. Right. For yeah. example, if you take your test at uh, Mount Vernon, you're actually taking that through the Laurel uh, VE organization. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. in fact, the Laurel VE organization's policy is there is no cost associated with taking the exam. That's right. Yeah, some 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 VE, um, VE sessions will charge. Some are free. So. And there's another aspect of VEs that's kind of interesting. You know how people go on DM mm -hmm. positions. Mm -hmm. Well, the clubs, particularly out in the West, Montana particularly, is all, are always looking for VEs who want a vacation in Montana and then proper exam because they don't have enough VEs to cover the state. Oh, I didn't know that. That's and interesting. Can, there's a place you can go and sign up. So they pay you to vacation next week? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and give a visa. Well, guess we're going on vacation next week. Okay. Don't volunteer. You don't get it. It's free. <laughs> but it is That's it, funny. I mean, it's the equivalent of the expedition. Anyway, I'm going to go Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, John? Just a couple of questions. Um, is there a rationale for requiring that you have an advanced license if all you're doing is marking six. It's not like you need to advise the, are you, are you counseling or advising or just uh, it's FCC requirement? It's an FCC requirement. It's an FCC requirement. Okay, so it doesn't, yeah. doesn't make any sense to you though? I mean, is there some rationale that you know of? Well, if you're not an extra class VE, you are limited because you cannot, a, a general, class VE cannot grade someone who's going for their extra class. They can only grade oh, for a technician. I understand yeah. the John, it's, a rule. it's an FCC okay. rule. Leave it's it at that, please. Just yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. Applause, please.